Está bien. Ahora, a seguir son...
the wave on the ocean will never be able to determine that it is the ocean. No matter how big it gets, no matter how high and mighty, it'll never be able to perceive the ocean. No matter what it does, no matter how far it travels, it will never realize its inherent self as being the ocean. And yet there is a point of connection between the wave and the ocean. And if the ocean was to spread for a million miles with a million waves, the ocean is not disturbed at all by any or every wave. And what instruction could you give to that wave of how to realize it is the true spirit of the ocean. You would not tell it to go somewhere, to do something or to be something. You would tell it to look and to see, to let go of its individuality, to realize it is part of the spirit of the ocean. And that point of connectedness between the ocean and the way is the same between you and the world. You think you are the individual, yet you are the spirit. And you look out into the world and see that the world is there in front of you. But if you are told to look for that point of connection, the first point you would consider would be the body. The body interacts with the physical world. And if you look deeper, you may say the senses are what interacts with the physical world the sight and the smell and the taste. If you look a little deeper still, you may say it's the feelings that come from the senses that interact with the world. And then you may consider, well, it's actually the mind. It is the mind that interacts with the physical world. Because not only do I see it and feel it, but then I describe it and judge it. And then you may think, well, it's my memory. My memory is what derives what is important, what is not important, what is seen and what is not seen. My memory then determines how I interact with the world. But you may rationalize to yourself, there are some things you remember and some that you do not. And with a little insight, you may say, it is becoming aware of a certain memory, which then reflects into the world. So the point of connection is my memory, or at least my awareness of a certain part of my memory. And that is why life tends to repeat itself. It's re repetition of a memory of yesterday.
And if you look a little deeper still, you would say, well, actually, it is what I focus on that then triggers a memory, that then triggers an experience which then is seen in the exterior world. And you come to the point of what you focus upon becomes real. It's seen first internally and then externally. And the experiment begins at this point and says, what if I focused on something else? And you begin the path of the creator. If I focus on peace, do I see peace in the world? If I focus on love, do I see love in the world? If I just focus on my body, my individuality, do I then see individuality? And of course, the answer to this is yes. So you come to the point of having an open awareness and be able to create anything and then to witness that creation in the world is this not the start of the description of what you would say spirit is one that watches and allows creation to take place and that to be watched as well. If you come to this point, where is death? So the purity of your spirit is where you are looking. It is the eyesight you have, the true eye, rather than the physical. If you see love in another person, that is because there is love inside you. If you see pain and difficulty and trouble in another person, that is where you have placed your attention inside you. If you see that their life is full of difficulties beyond what you thought was bearable, Refocus your attention on the peace that is inside you. And then you become not only the creator, but the observer. If you look externally, you find the negativity in the world. And that is your signpost to be the beauty on the inside. So this was the point, the talk of about the man and his pipe. He thought it was the tobacco that was giving him peace and bliss as he sat in the garden at the end of a hard day's work. but it allowed him to shift towards the truth inside. And he felt it in his being and then saw it in the creatures in the dark. 
But without this knowledge, he said, sitting in the garden smoking my pipe is blissful. <clears throat> But it has nothing to do with the tobacco, the pipe, the garden, or the man, even. So if you sit in times of agitation, the more you concentrate on agitation, the more agitation you will get. And the wave will get bigger trying to find a way out. But the answer's not in the world. Come internal to your spiritual home. And first see that the agitation is something other than who you are. But something you may have created. Come into the stillness of spirit. And the more you open up into your possibilities of creation, the more creation aligns with you and your truth. And therefore, synchronicities are seen, coincidences. Come in to the potential to create anything. You are not what you create. You are the watcher of what you create. You are the spirit that watches the creation So hence also in a talk. When talking about fear, I said fear is not a presence, it's an absence. You've taken the view of love and changed it with the view of lack of love. Therefore, giving you the impression of fear. If you want to meet a great deity, if you want to meet a very simple man, if you want to meet someone that's argumentative, if you want to meet the world in a great storm or in the peace and serene of a God, allow yourself to be true inside and once you become that clarity that clear time the more truth you are in your spiritual nature means the more peace and joy that will naturally just flow through you and be seen in the world. So it's often said that the physical world is a school. One where you come to learn a certain lesson. It is also said at different times by different people that the world comes from you and not to you. And there'll be times where you have challenge on the outside of you and difficulties that you must tackle and go beyond. You see, all that out there is a signpost of what you must deal with in there, in yourself. So the more you open to your spiritual path, 
to begin with, there's more joy and connection. And the way it becomes an intoxicant that must take you slowly in. And then you see the troubles that come. And you believe that the spiritual path has got worse, not got better. But these are the cleansings and clearings of what holds you back. These are the fallings away of what is not required. These are the lessons that you see that you can either analyze deeply or step beyond to realize that is not who you are, but what you are seeing. So the physical world starts as a heavy to massive world. A world of weights and difficulty and structure and the simple consciousness of evolution working at its lowest point is satisfied only by the demands of the body and the physical. And as you enlighten awaken, start to see yourself, you know you are not those pains, but they do feel very real. You know that you are not that density, but it's difficult to break away from. You know the pains in your body and the pains of circumstance and they come to torture you. But your spiritual path is through them. If you dwell in all of these, they become more real and heavier. But you must carry on on your journey. And here now, if you resolve to try to understand everything, why does this happen? How does this happen? When and where? You become lost. With no safe refuge, even a simple answer just triggers more thought. So let me describe this in another way. And if you are willing, you should do this exercise as we talk about it now. And see how long you can stay with the exercise that I talk about. So you sit here in front of me and you feel your body. And I say to you, are you the same person that you were when you were just a few months old? Look at it yourself now. Are you that same person? Clearly, your body will have changed. And what was important to you will have changed. But are you that same person? And you must come to the conclusion that, yes, I am that same person. But my circumstances are different. So are you that same person when you were within the womb of your mother? And yet your body was still forming. Are you that same person?
And are you the same person that was there at the point of fertilization? Your fertilization. Is that same person still present here today? Even though the circumstances have changed greatly, is that person still here today? And if tomorrow you hit a great disaster in the physical world, is that same person still there tomorrow? And if the day after you achieve some immense riches, fame, or anything else, is that same person still? And if in 12 months time, you lose everything that you once held so dear, Is that person still there? And you come now to the moment of your passing. Are you there as you take your last breath? And are you the same person just after your breath stopped? And as the body goes into the grave, are you the same person? So even though your body and your circumstance changes, From nothing to nothing, your sense of being is exactly the same. Through the highs and lows, through the pains and the joy, the sense of being of the individual remains the same. The spirit essence is not concerned by the rise and the fall of the way. Your sense of being is your true. The witnessing of all that comes and all that will go is your true. And all you need to do is look into the point of connection between the physical and non-physical realm and decide what that is. 
Is it your body, your senses, your mind, your memory? Or something else? So let's continue a little after the healing list of names. If I may have those now, please, Brent. Ariel, Nelsie, Danielle, Michael, Ed, Eileen, Teresa, Isaac, Jeannie, Suzanne, Susanna, Stephanie and Carol, Dennis and Cindy Hawk, Emily and Paul, Nazarin, Nelson Oliver Cruz Valenzuela, Lauren Collins, Alex, Roz, Amanda Kay, Karen, Rob, Elizabeth, Corin, Tilly, da Daniel, Chantel, Tamara and Jonah, Wendy, Gerard, Taylor, Faye and Dale Kenny, Vivian Sellers, Deborah, Helen, Bob and Val Oswald, Howard, Jeremiah and Maureen, Nigel Clark and Mom, Teresa, Liza, Laura, Ronnie and Noah, Abigail, Georgia, Lorna and Justin, and finally Trevor. Thank you. As death arrives to the physical body, there is a revealing of the spiritual truth. The end of one play happens and the actors go backstage. And yet the backstage is far more real than the front of the stage. After all, it is a play, so it must be naturally full of drama. But in the backstage, as one then gets ready for the next play that must be played. Starts to put on the costume of the next event. And just waits and be ready for their turn. And as that actor in the costume walks on to the next play, He plays a play or a part in the play so that both he and the audience will learn from. And he undertakes that role for the benefit of others as well as for the benefit of himself. And the audience leaving the theatre at the end will learn, leave with a, a lesson that they may have picked up or was taught during the play. And they would vow to practice what was taught. I will practice that every day and my life would then become different. And then the awakening of their spiritual journey may well have begun. But the presence or the being that 
was in the body, prior to the body and after the body that we have just experienced, is also in the actor as he walks onto the play. And only when he goes backstage does he realize that he is not that body, that personality, that negativity that he is gaining. And those in the audience, perhaps wanting to get a glimpse of what the actor really looks like, must just let go of the costume and makeup. But they must also let go of the personality that they've seen on the stage. And when they see the truth of that person, at first there is some shock of dismay and thinking, well, you are actually far deeper to the personality I saw on stage. And the awakening to what was true, that it was all just a play, a costume, a pretense. So in your physical life, if you hold on to the circumstances of life, you think they are you. You think that money in your pocket is you. Or you think the lack of money in your pocket But that is still part of the play. You think the storm in us that the set has created, the blowing of wind across the stage, is you. It is not. You think you are the hero or the villain or the victim. That is not true. The real, the one I hope you perceive from fertilization to beyond the last breath, does not change no matter what happened in the life. The spirit you is the sea. The wave is part of the great ocean. So let us make this a little practical. Around you now will be times of challenge. Some very mild and some quite major. Some of you will be going through your own transitions of life from, well, let us say from adolescence to teenage. Know that all those circumstances are not you. So when you undertake or you witness beauty or pain, they are not you, but they are a signpost of something that is in the way to you being the true expression of your spiritual truth. And all that must be done is to let go of the focus on the difficulty to be focused on the peace. Let go of 
the perception of body and mind and the peace will be there. Let go of the difficulty in life and the peace will be there. Let go of all that must be done and the peace will be there. Allow the mind to fall into that serenity. And then you become closer to the near to the clear diamond. So you have all that you need. The exterior world will just be a signpost, a lesson classroom, the front of the stage. You are so much more. You are beyond being touched by anything in the world. There is nothing that will harm unless you focus on the harm and you will feel it but it is still not you look for your own point of connection between you and the physical world Know that whatever goes on out there, you are still all spirit and truth. Forever present, forever watching, forever full of love and joy. And these then are the words of a wise one from times gone by. As he acknowledged those caught in the play and not seeing what is true in the world. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. You now have your signpost home. Do not be caught. Acknowledge first truth. Or as we like to put it, first find spirit. And then let spirit do it. God bless you. Thank mm -hmm. you.